and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Sarah Pascoe and Josh Widdicombe, Rob Beckett, Hugh Dennis and Gary Delaney. <laughs> we start tonight with a game called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image from the week, so teams, here's your picture, but why has this man been in the news this week? Has someone just said to him, give me one good reason why Labour won't win the general election? <laughs> <laughs> I think he swallowed some milk and he's going to do his impression of the human zit. <laughs> what he seems to be saying to me is, he's going, if you want to hear crap, this is where it comes from. <laughs> They say that the distance between a man's thumb and his forefinger is the likelihood of him ever getting elected Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> is he about to demonstrate how he thinks gay men have sex? <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, they don't do that. They don't, do that. they don't do that. <laughs> I have no interest in them at all. I, you know, just for the once, you just go, come on, we just do it once. <laughs> Boy, <yeah. laughs> Lara, you're there in the background. Can't you tell us what he said? <laughs> I'm a little scared. That's not me. <laughs> you, you can't just... I'm sorry, the lookalike Dara game is quite clear, yeah, right? No, yeah. You can't just point to any large, bald man and go... Uh, well, you don't know he's large. He's about three foot by the look yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think what he's doing is he's going, I am the Phil Neville of politics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to accept that as the correct answer. <laughs> yes, it is the Labour leader, Ed Miliband, in the news this week as he's been attacked by the press and some Labour MPs for the latest in a series of perceived gaffes. Uh, what's the latest one? A photo was taken of him holding a copy of The Sun, wasn't it, that was sent to every house in Britain? It's, yes. It's special. quite a sad picture, isn't it? He looks like a teenager who's looked at page three and he's hiding his boner, really, doesn't yes. he? <laughs> All the leaders did them, and this was regarded as being... Well, because of Labour's links with, with, with Liverpool, that was regarded as an yeah. uh, offensive people to do there. But also, it was just regarded... They were all doing essentially an ad for the Sun. I mean, Clegg did one as well. The one I think... He got the grief. This is the really freaky one, is the Osborne one. The Osborne... That's just oh, bizarre. Yeah. Oh, God. Who owns a paper like that? Yeah. You know, he should have, like, a Waffen SS thing on his hand going, <laughs> These are your papers! These are your papers! <laughs> Do you know what it looks like? You know when someone's taken hostage and they have to prove it by holding up a <laughs> copy of today's paper? <laughs> well, what year? What year is it? It's this year! <laughs> the, uh... Actually, this is quite interesting because they didn't put page three in the sons they gave up for... I obviously did have a third page, but they didn't... <laughs> One, two, three, the news is finished! <laughs> so they didn't put page three in them because it would be uh, offensive to some families. And it's quite interesting, because I've been thinking about this, because, you know, there's this organisation called No More Page Three, because they think it's objectification and children see it and women get uncomfortable on public transport. Well, um, all these other people are saying, oh, why are feminists suppressing other women? Like, we live in the Western world, they choose to do this job. But they wouldn't have a livelihood if you took it away. And I think I've solved it. And what we do is we make page three like jury duty. <laughs> so every woman over the age of 18 now has to do page three. And you just wake up one day, there's a letter, says, Dear Sarah, please come to the Sun offices at 9am, bring some snazzy pants and a pithy quote about Syria. And you just have to go. Imagine the day you buy the Sun and it's your mum. <laughs> That's the high price. That's the high price you pay for our freedoms. Uh, <laughs> your mum's baths occasionally will have to appear. <laughs> I apologise to Josh's mum. Um, yeah, they, I hope they... that makes the edit. That will be the proudest moment of her life when she goes, Dara Breen, apologise to me on TV. <laughs> I know she says rearranging her bath. <laughs> 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 I, I apologise again. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to all women for that motion. I'm not sure what that is, but in the case. I don't get the point of getting them holding the paper. Why is Ed Miliband holding the sun? You, if you're PR people, you're getting them in the sun. Do you know what I mean? If they can't get them in the proper page, at least dear Deidre, like, oh, I betrayed my brother and I won't talk to me. <laughs> 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 They keep banging on about his gaffes. How many houses has he got? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where he lives. Well, well, it is, I mean, the, the, the independent ram with, with that picture ram with the headline. An unbelievable headline. Miliband fails to look normal while eating a bacon sandwich. <laughs> that is the new 
news in the event that day. I, I like that they said the uh, his advisors stepped in. But I, I just imagine they stepped in and like, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Open wide, Ed. Yeah. I, think, I think this is good PR for him because although they actually say that people who eat messily are very good lovers, and also they're covered in crumbs that you can use for snacks. <laughs> 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 what does it matter if you can't eat a bacon sandwich? My dad's well good at eating sandwiches, but he'll be shit running the country. <laughs> He upset everyone, didn't he? Because he, he, he upset people by eating it badly and looking unpleasant, and he also upset the Jewish community, of which he is part, by eating a bacon sandwich. <laughs> it's like for his next PR right, thing, he's going to hold up... A, he might as well just hold up a picture of Margaret Thatcher and eat a packet of frazzles on Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what about the what other what other gaffes has he is he purported he, to have made? He was asked to estimate how much the average family spent on food shopping, and his answer was that depends how much you're spending, which is right. <laughs> that is the right answer. <laughs> and then everyone went off on one. And then he, they said, oh, they want a number figure, and he said between seventy-five and eighty pounds. And they were like, oh no, actually you're out of touch. It's a hundred pounds. Yeah, like, if he had said £150, we'd be tearing a strip off him, like, oh, yeah. what are you eating? You Caviar? It's like, it's like when you're guessing someone's age. Yeah. You always go under what you think always the actual answer Always go lower. You don't go, you're what, say you're ooh, 50, 55? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm still in the school you know. <laughs> <laughs> The reason it was so cheap was, is in fact what he does is he buys a lot of reduced price stuff that is way past its sell by date in case his brother comes to visit. <laughs> <laughs> My theory is that he probably doesn't do the shopping. He doesn't do the shopping, and even if he does go to the shop, he probably hasn't got any money because he's always brought the wrong trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, no, I had to think about that joke for quite a long time before I launched it. I don't want him to know how much groceries are. Like, I know that. I want him to know about things I don't understand, like the economy, healthcare, and spelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We spend too much in my house because my boyfriend's obsessed with nectar points. So he doesn't... He buys whatever gives you extra nectar points because he thinks if there's an apocalypse, the nectar points are going to outlast Sterling as currency. <laughs> <laughs> and he might be right. It, you <laughs> can't do that because technically you're an unsecured creditor of the supermarkets because I got wiped out on my Nando's card. I'd built up two chickens and then they changed the point system. I was absolutely oh. living. Oh. And that. I hope you're watching, Nando's. I haven't been back since. <laughs> I'm a man who takes chicken very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that is like if, you, if that was a joke, you would have said more than two chickens. It was clearly so small an amount that oh, that no. came from the heart. Yeah. No, there is no humour there. That is, that is just genuine <laughs> anger. I'm not supposed to about social justice and the NHS, but if I'm owed a free chicken, I bloody well want a free chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what has Boris Johnson splashed out on this week? He's bought two things called Ziegler Wasserwerfer 9000s. He has bought the Ziegler Wasserwerfer 9000s. Yeah, right? they're water cannon. He's bought two water cannon. Yes. Yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be like Boris bikes and you can rent them out and ride them. <laughs> <around>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, his so idea is he's driving up to your neighbour's barbecue <laughs> going. Hello, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> <laughs> No invitation for me again, I see. <laughs> oh, you can put... Those sausages are coming along very well. <laughs> or put fairy liquid in it and have a phone party. <laughs> <laughs> Surely the best way to stop a riot with a water cannon would be to put some radox in it. Just everyone just relax and have a look. <laughs> He said the reason, didn't he? He said the reason he was getting them is because he thought that they would have, could have been used to protect the firemen during the riots in 2011. As if, of course, the firemen didn't have their own high-projectile <laughs> watering machine they could have used. I reckon he got really drunk and just bought it off eBay. Because <laughs> <laughs> that uh, uh, happened to me. I've got a pair of roller skates and a windsurfer in my shed. <laughs> Windsurfer, that's yeah. a man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Does he ever put on the roller skates and just hear him just roller skating around the yeah. garage? <laughs> you're, you're laughing, but the bloke in your garage is bloody furious, yes. I tell you. Oh, what's he doing in there? He's in the shed, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's moved. <laughs> do, you have, do you move him around every uh, start? Uh, yeah, because otherwise you get spare bedroom taxed. <laughs> <laughs> If um, Boris Johnson ever offers to show you his water cannon, <laughs> say no. Yeah. And, um, Boris, if you're watching, I don't want your money, I just think you should see our kid. <laughs> 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 uh, 
the end of that round. The prize go to Rob, Hugh and Gary. <laughs> now we play a round called hashtag Wheel of News, hashtag funny, hashtag lol. Uh, <laughs> this game involves Rob, Sarah and Gary. See so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round's a stand-up challenge. I launched the Wheel of News and whoever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First topic is family. Who wants to come in last? Oh, Rob. I went uh, shopping with my nan the other day. She's a very straight talker, man, very sort of South East London. And uh, we were doing the shops. I said, Nan, get yourself some trousers, they're on special. She went, Nah, it's all right, son. Got enough to see me out. How depressing is that? <laughs> Basing your fashion choices upon your lifespan. <laughs> I don't care that she's quite modern, she's on the internet and stuff. Uh, she went, I saw you on YouTube last Tuesday. I was like, watch it when you want, then. It's not scheduled. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she... Oh, is that a weird fly? Oh. Oh, it's weird, wasn't it? It's weird. <laughs> weird fly. It's me granddad having a go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I went to visit her recently, her internet weren't working, right? She went, can you sort my internet out? And all right, Nan, show me how you normally log on to the internet. I'll see what you're doing wrong and get it done. She went, what I do is I click on the start button. I was like, right. She went, I go to programs. I was like, right. She went, I go into accessories. I'm like, that's wrong, but carry on. <laughs> she went, I go into games. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I go into solitaire, play that for a bit. <laughs> click on the cross, then I double click on Internet Explorer. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, you could probably cut out the middleman now. <laughs> And I was worried that, um, that she's at home thinking that she has to play solitaire to get online. <laughs> <laughs> I need to send that email, but I cannot face another card game. I'm sick of it. Many <laughs> uh, sort of, like, um, internet sort of computer people are thinking, actually, Rob, that is the incorrect route to solitaire on the latest version of Windows. You're correct. But she's on Windows 98. We're not upgrading her. <laughs> It'll see her out. <laughs> well done, Rob. OK. Let's spin the wheel. Somebody is ageing. Who wants to talk about that? Sarah. OK, and so I'm 33 years old, which is where magazines will tell you that a woman has her sexual peak. And I used to think that was a lie, that it was something that they were saying to younger women so they wouldn't be afraid of getting older. Like, oh, yes, you will have a moustache and a slow metabolism, <laughs> but you'll also be gagging for it all of the time. <laughs> This age, and I do believe in it. I basically think your body starts flooding with hormones because you only have so much longer left to have a child. Because that's it. I'm 33 and I've never had a baby. I have had a tapeworm. <laughs> It's not the same. And, um, but the trouble that I'm having is... Um, so, my boyfriend's also my age, and he's experiencing a lot less interest in sex. He's having a sexual slump. Because, um, apparently, boys have a sexual peak when they're around 18. And that is not fair. That is a horrible trick that nature has played. Because an 18-year-old doesn't want to have sex with me any more than I want people to know that I've done that. <laughs> and, and it's not fair! It's not fair, cos when I was a teenager, I didn't particularly enjoy or understand sex, yet I had it all of the time, out of politeness, or to stay <laughs> friends with someone, or say thanks for the lift. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. So that leaves us now with Gary. Let's see what you've been there for. Gary, let's spin the wheel. And the topic is shopping. Here we go. I bought a slimming magazine in WH Schmidt's. I didn't read it, I just wanted a big bar of Galaxy for a pound. <laughs> <laughs> I bought some fancy pens at a nudist art shop. Felt tips? No, but I touched a couple of bollocks. <laughs> I was in a lingerie shop. I said, are these knickers satin? He said, no, they're new. I went to buy a Christmas tree. The guy said, are you going to put it up yourself? I said, no, I was thinking the living room. <laughs> <clears throat> Bought a chameleon. Lost it. <laughs> Why is it that when women go to the toilet in pairs, no one minds, but when I did it, I got thrown out of the greengrocers? <laughs> I got into a fight with my acupuncturist and stabbed him. He said he'd never felt better. <laughs> According to the vet, my cat's in heat. I didn't even know she was famous. <laughs> uh. 
friend of mine keeps going on and on about how good his orthopaedic shoe is, but I think he's built it up too much. <laughs> I bought an advent calendar for Jehovah's Witnesses, but on every door somebody tells you to fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, brilliant, but at the end of that round, the point's gonna go to me! Come on, <laughs> The next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Sarah, which category would you like? Sport, Sport, please. OK. Very big <clears throat> at the moment, sport. The answer is three billion. What is the question? Is the question, how many sleeps are there till England wins the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many people on the planet would be a better commentator than Phil Neville? <laughs> is it how many people will have to die in the Middle East before Tony Blair thinks that he might not be the best peace envoy there is? <laughs> Is it what percentage battery life do I need on an iPhone to last all day? <laughs> <laughs> Is it about how many hairs were in the swing bin at the end of Chewbacca's full body waxing? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the amount of adverts Joe Hart's been in? <laughs> Is it how many free chickens is Gary now going to have delivered by Nando's? <laughs> oh, and I would do it! <laughs> You pour yourself out yeah. for free chickens. Is it, is it how many times has David Cameron said to Nick Clegg, shh, not now? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm going to move you, move you towards a correct answer. If this is how many... It's loads. It's how many people actually watch the World Cup. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Well done. Very good. Yeah. Well done, sir. Yes, the question I was looking for was how many viewers around the world are claimed to be tuning into the World Cup? This is the predicted figure of worldwide viewers, with some estimating it'll reach as high as 3.5 billion. FIFA expects the tournament to be the most watched TV event ever. At the time of recording, we don't know the result of England's second game against Uruguay, which possibly determines whether or not you reach the tournament's knockout stage and certainly determines the mood of a lot of people watching the show at the moment. So, mm, sad face, happy. Uh, <laughs> different, different where to go on this, uh, to be honest. So, best luck, hard luck, you know, them to break. I can't stand it! <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't stand winning a match as successfully oh, as that. yes, I tried, I love it. <laughs> I'm sure the fans don't really matter what the score was as long as everyone tried their best. Right, yeah. guys? <laughs> yeah, high five! High five, yeah. everybody! Yeah. Some things aren't worth joking about. <laughs> What's the betting? Somebody said to uh, Wayne Rooney, Uruguay, and he said, yeah, no, and Colleen's a girl. <laughs> Didn't they try and acclimatise? One, one of the ways they acclimatised was by eating really hot curries. And apparently, Sturridge likes a vindaloo, Gerard likes a madras, and Rooney prefers a plain man. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it was like ten years ago. When are we going to forget? Oh, like, when you we, this show will never do forget it. things like that. <laughs> <laughs> changing lots of things about football this year and I think actually we could move that a little bit further I've got some suggestions to how we can improve the World Cup so for instance listen up when someone gets a free kick they shouldn't have to use that on the ball they could use it on any of the other players or the ref use it anywhere also when there's substitutions I think that should be like online grocery shopping like oh you asked for Theo Walcott but we couldn't find him <laughs> so we've sent you retired cricketer Ian Botham <laughs> Do you know what? I'd still vote for you ahead of Sepp Blatter. <laughs> <laughs> what other innovations have we seen in this World Cup? Spray foam. Spray, spray foam. The the love it. The spray <laughs> foam is magic. So exciting, it's isn't it? It's really good, yeah, isn't it? it? Like, really because great. it's actually... People, I think people genuinely think it's, it, it's like, a wall, like a wall that magically creates a barrier. They go, and they go, oh, like they're trapped in a crystal <laughs> prison. Oh, like yeah. Superman and do, oh, I can't get out of here. I'm oh. trapped against the glass. It, it does disappear pretty quickly, but if you're going to put a white line in front of footballers, it's going to go. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> I'm, impre I'm impressed that at no point so far has anyone drawn a cock and balls with it. Yeah. Which you think would be inevitable. They've not, they've not warned us about it. So it just looked like he'd completely lost the plot. <laughs> Vanessa started writing things in Big Brother. It like, look, look, I can't deal with the pressure. I'm just spraying on the ground. <laughs> Who was the talk of Twitter during England's first game? Oh, Mr. Philip Neville. <laughs> yes, it was Philip Neville. People were disappointed 
that he didn't have much charisma as a co cop This is Phil Neville. <laughs> He's not a byword. No one before that was going, well, my dream dinner party. Well, <laughs> Martin Luther King, <laughs> Gandhi, <laughs> Philip Neville. <laughs> He's a very boring man. What do you expect? The thing is, I felt sorry for him, though, because, you know, basically, he wasn't as good a footballer as his brother Gary. He's not as good a commentator as his brother Gary. You feel if Phil Neville entered a Phil Neville look-alike competition, <laughs> Gary would win that. <laughs> the only person who thinks that Phil is better than Gary is Ed Miliband. <laughs> And the choice of music doesn't mean an inspiring piece of music. The ITV music in particular is just a guy going, Brazil. <laughs> and they put the rest of the song out. It's like it's a really good song. It's a really famous samba song, that one with like, dun dun dun, dun 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 dun. No, we don't want that bit. We just want the bit where you go, Brazil. Uh, I like, I like it. Obviously, I've loved the Brazilian rhythms. Um, <laughs> yes, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, I... I look at you and I think, here's a man who loves Brazilian rhythms. <laughs> I think Josh Whitaker and I think the intoxicating <laughs> samba rhythms of Brazil. You know, we see you backstage, Josh, where you wear that giant like headdress that comes all the way out. Like, uh, just, and you're just in there going, hey, what are we going to talk about the show today? <laughs> 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 Well, I'm looking forward to when they watch this bit of the show and then get you in for the final. It's going to be brilliant, isn't it? You sambering across the ITV studio. If they flew me to Brazil for the final, I will wear the headdress. I am. I think if we had a whip round with this studio audience, it could happen. I get to Brazil. I'll just go to the beach behind the ITV studios. <laughs> I will not go! I will not go! <laughs> it's a <laughs> <laughs> behind the BBC studio. In the football team, uh, they had all their passport numbers revealed, didn't they? They, they, they got did. them given out. Apart from Wayne Rooney who doesn't, in fact, need a passport anymore since he's been chipped. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for him. Wayne Rooney could, at half an hour ago, scored, uh, like, a blistering hat-trick <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and be the, the most greatest, most beloved man in the country. And we're here still peddling the old stereotype <laughs> about Wayne Rooney. So. He hasn't the scored a hat-trick and yeah. then I'll, gone, I'll go for that. I'm going to celebrate by watching my favourite show, Mock the Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I bring up a whole satellite thing in the dressing room. Come on, guys, let's watch Mock the Week in the dressing room. I was spraying, oh, what a, what a result. I, I wonder, has, it, has the good news filtered through at home? Oh, oh come on. <laughs> and next to him is Phil Neville going, oh. Ed Miliband's joined them in the dressing room. <laughs> boss of Nando's. <laughs> you think the boss of Nando's, Ed Miliband, Phil Neville and Wayne Rooney are on a night out in Rio tonight yes, watching the show. Yeah, going, damn right. Our stock has never been Higher! At the end of that round, the boys are going to Josh, Sarah, and Andy! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. Our first subject is things you won't hear at the World Cup. <laughs> No one's guaranteed a start in this England team. The only thing that's nailed on is Wayne Rooney's hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a horrible two footed lunge, but it was the only way I could shut Phil Neville up. <laughs> <laughs> and now our cameraman is going to pick out some of the plainer girls in the crowd. <laughs> Let's have a look at possession. Yes, seven Colombians have been arrested for it. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just this one side is doing it all the time. That's really unfair. I'm so sorry, right? You two are just... You're kind of hogging it a bit. So for the rest of the round, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to... <laughs> Things you won't hear at the World Cup. dun 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 Sorry, excuse me, let me It's the first time that most people have ever seen Dara's legs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that's Messi. Oh, Messi. Yes, Wayne Rooney should never have a half-time orange unsupervised. <laughs> There's little doubt now that Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the world's all-time greatest twats. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sugarloaf Mountain, the hardest level on Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very soft tackle, as Pele hasn't taken his tablets yet. <laughs> <laughs> is he the finished article? That's the question. He did very well against Italy, but Sterling has traditionally performed very badly against the dollar and the yen. <laughs> And now we go over live for Nigeria against the Ivory Coast and our commentator, Ron Atkinson. <laughs> you join us here in Brazil where it's still fucking well up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's heard what's going on in Iraq? <laughs> There's six Brazilians in the wall and two in the foundations. That's the Mafia for you. <laughs> Four years later, Paul the Octopus is back. And what a stew he made. <laughs> Andre Pirlo, the only player in world football to be named after the Palestinian Liberation Organisation. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. OK. The next coming is... On lighter things to hear on a cookery program. No, 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 that's a flower, Nigella. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be very careful when handling raw meat. But if your wife does walk in, close the laptop, pull up the trousers, <laughs> and feign ignorance. <laughs> The thing to remember when making your own pesto is you're wasting your time. <laughs> so, pop in a lemon, shove in the stuffing, sew up the mouth and that should keep Greg Wallace quiet for a bit. <laughs> no, I'm afraid those aren't bacon bits. I've just got a bit of eczema at the moment. If you add vodka into the tomatoes, it really brings out the flavour. And if you add it to your wine, you can pass out before the kids get home. <laughs> you should be able to get the ingredients for this anywhere. They are goat's horn, chervil, and the frozen tears of an elf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anthony Worrell Thompson. Today we're going to be needing salmon, noodles, and parsley. So I'm going to nip down to Tesco and shove them up my jumper. <laughs> That's enough cooking. Next up, we've got some twat trying to flog a book. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what's happening in Iraq? <laughs> Welcome to Chinese Meals in Minutes. I'll have a 19. <laughs> and some prawn crackers. So, alternatively, it's gas mark for, for 20 minutes. You're watching Dignitas Television. <laughs> <laughs> this asparagus smells delicious. Now, imagine what it tasted like when I ate it yesterday. <laughs> After MasterChef, Celebrity MasterChef and MasterChef The Professionals, now it's MasterChef, the only five people in Britain who've not been on MasterChef. <laughs> We'd like to apologise for the misprint in this week's Radio Times. Paul Hollywood is, in fact, a massive cook. <laughs> we only use the freshest ingredients, so this is Daisy and this is a stun gun. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that, the poor show and a Rob, <laughs> you and Barry! That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Rob Beckett, Hugh Dennis, and Gary Delaney. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Sarah Pasco, and Josh Riddicombe. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darwin. Good night. <laughs>
that's it. You've had your laughs. Now fill up on sport. Japan versus Greece is BBC One's Match of the Day live right now. Or if you just can't stop laughing, then go to BBC Three for Russell Howard's Good News. Here on BBC Two, Newsnight is next. Whoa. Whoa.